Today we're going to be learning another aspect of who God is and who his character is. And he is the Lord, our deliverer, the Lord, our deliverer. And today's guest is going to be talking about just that. He went from a shady past to now he's an on fire gangbusters believer in the Lord. And we're going to hear about his story and his name is Justin Mazou. So Justin, we welcome you today. Thank you very much for having me. It's an honor and a blessing to be here. Yeah, it's awesome. So I've known you for a few years um, now, you know, from a distance at least anyways, and have seen you more recently. Mm -hmm. And uh, just really intrigued by your testimony and your story. So right now, um, you are a worship pastor yes. in your church. And um, just tell us a little about your personal life, your family, Sure. Yeah, I'd love to. I'm uh, I'm one of the, I'm the worship leader at our church, mm -hmm. uh, downtown Saskatoon, uh, Christ the Healer Gospel Church. I'm also a husband uh, to an amazing wife. Her name is Sienna, and I'm also a father to two beautiful young children. Oscar is eight years old, and Lydia is four, turning five very soon. And they're adorable. Oh my goodness, they're yes. so, ador yes, so adorable. Yes, they are. <laughs> it's good. So, so you're a family man. Yes. You're a church man. You're, yes. you, you lead worship. You lead people into the presence of God, which is, you know, just such an amazing honor. And um, you have a servant's heart in so many ways and just, just a, becoming a real leader, even in the community. Um, but that wasn't always the case. That wasn't always the case. Mm -hmm. you, you had went through some pretty dark times in your past. Um, can you share with us how you came to know Christ and, and what, what led up to that? Sure. Well, thank you, Sherry, for letting me uh, kind of share where I am now, because I think that's important that the life I'm living now was the life that I was always meant to live. You know, God created me to be, you know, like the things we talked about, a worship leader, a leader in my church, uh, you know, to have a family, to be blessed with, with two amazing children, um, and just to be a son um, of the Most High God and to be in His mm -hmm. family. That's right now is where I believe I was, this is where I was always meant to be. You know, um, but like you said, that wasn't always the case. I, I did grow up in a Christian home, um, so I had a good bringing, upbringing. Uh, I always felt that I had everything I needed. I, was, I knew a lot about God. I, I had very limited experiences with God. Um, but, I, you know, I grew up going to Sunday school, and I grew up going to youth group. So I, I had, a, had a lot of firsthand knowledge of God. And it was kind of around my teenage years, 14, 15 years old, where everything started to go off the rails. And you know, the enemy has a plan for our life as well as God. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes um, his plans and his schemes and the lies that he tells us um, take root in our lives. And it kind of leads us, leads us away from the path that God had for us. Mm -hmm. And that happened when I was, you know, 14, 15 years old. So at, so at 15, something turned. Yes. So some darkness came into your life. Mm -hmm. um, so can you explain what kind of led to that? What you were going through, what you were thinking emotionally? Sure. Yeah. Sure. Well, I was, uh, you know, feeling depressed at the time, you know, as a, as a young kid, you're kind of carefree and just doing whatever, you know, comes to mind and you're having fun. And then, you know, being a teenager is, is sometimes hard generally, you know, with people and the different feelings and, and stuff going on, changes in your life. And, and I was dealing with a little bit of depression. So I was feeling sad. Um, but the enemy really used that, uh, you know, that moment and that weakness in my life to, to kind of turn things around on my, my walk with the Lord. It's mm -hmm. because I started to feel and I started to hear these lies that, you know, oh, God's word isn't true in your life. And he started mm -hmm. to say things like, you know, if God was really for you, if all of the, the promises in the Bible were really, were really supposed to be for you, why do you feel like this? Why do you mm -hmm. feel depressed? Why, um, you know, is things not working out the way that you want them? So really, that's when I started to believe these things. And really, it started to turn my heart against God. Right. You know, I knew God was loving. I knew he was caring. But all of a sudden, you know, these lies of the enemy came in. I thought, yeah, why, is, why am I feeling like this? You know, God, where are you? Why, why am I not living what I read in the Bible? So I really started to, 
to get angry at God mm. and kind of, you know, see him as my enemy, you know. So you didn't have your armor, spiritual armor on, so to speak, to yes. reject those lies at that point. Yes. And, I mean, uh, what 15-year-old, what, you know, would really. So, mm -hmm. so, okay, so you talk about the dark road you went on. Sure, yeah. So that kind of led me to rebel. You know, I, I started to, to get angry at God. I didn't really have, like I said, a, a, a close relationship with him. I had a lot of experiences, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't hear his voice and I, and I didn't go to him with my questions. I think that's another key. You know, I didn't, I didn't share those with other people. I kind of just, in my heart, I just started to get angry at him. And, uh, and it, obviously my story, even though it's unique in some sense, it's the same story as so many people. Um, many, many, maybe many people watching this, your son or your daughter or or someone that you know in your family or a friend has gone through the same story time and time again. And it's, you know, you end up um, seeking the, the wrong crowd of people, the wrong group mm, of people. Yeah. And I started hanging around with a different group of friends. And pretty quickly that led uh, into partying and drinking and drugs. Right. And, uh, you know, I, I can't explain all of the different reasons why, but as soon as I started doing drugs, it completely consumed my whole life. Mm -hmm. Like it became, as soon as I started, you know, even smoking weed, that became the only thing that I wanted to do from that moment on. Yeah. And that's all I could think about. Hmm. You know, it started to, it, it gave me some maybe relief from the feelings that I was having, but it was also part of my rebellion against God. You know, I knew that God didn't want me to do this. And because I was mad at him, I was going to do it just to make him more mad. Right. And, uh, and so that's what I started to do. And, and yeah, like I said, from that moment on, that's all I did. So, so it wasn't very long before I quit school. You know, some people live, uh, you know, years of going to parties and, and doing different things. But mm -hmm. me, I, you can ask my family. It's like I changed overnight. Oh, nice. You know, this, this kid that they saw growing up and all of a sudden, my mom, when she tells her side of the story, she says, you know, who is this kid? You know, who is this? This isn't the, the Justin that I knew growing up. You know, she always said that I was, you know, the, one of the perfect kids, you know, mm -hmm. polite, happy, easygoing. And all of a sudden I start doing drugs and I just turn into this different person. So your personality actually shifted. So it's OK. Just hang on a second here. Mm -hmm. OK, so just just to back up a bit. So it started out with some depression, mm -hmm. right? Some some emotional thing. And then the wrong crowd, you know, the Bible says evil company corrupts good behavior yes. and, and it, it warns about that you know and as I think a lot of people don't always take that to heart they just think like oh you know like of course God wants us to have friends and and these people are in my life why wouldn't I want to hang out with them and mm -hmm. and but there's there's right people and there's people that maybe will lead you away from God's plan for your life mm -hmm. so that evil company corrupts good behavior and, I, and I'm, I'm staying on that for a second because, you know, if, if you're a teenager or a young adult and you think, oh, you know, it's, it's, look at your social circle. You know, if you're not growing in the Lord, if you're struggling in an area, if you're, if you're depressed, be careful who you are hanging around. Because if you start to hang around with the wrong type of people, it's going to lead you, it's going to, it's going to lead you into darkness, right? And, and God wants to lead you into his light and his life, life abundant. And so I'm not going to talk any more on that. Um, but I just really wanted to kind of highlight that a little bit because a lot, of, a lot of young people don't think choosing friends wisely is important. Mm -hmm. They just kind of choose situationally or what's around them or who they go to school with or whatever, mm -hmm. but choose your friends wisely because, and that's such an important thing because that really was a shift for you then. Yes. 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 So yeah. what I also would say about that is, you know, like, even though we know a lot of people, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people that we, we know and we have good relationships, but mm -hmm. we only have a few friends, right? Real friends. Yeah. And, uh, when you make those real friends, like you said, good people and people that you know that are going to encourage you and lead you down the right path, mm -hmm. then you're able to go to everyone. And, you know, you have that firm foundation to go and help those people, everyone. It's not that you're running away from people, but the people closest to you, you're making sure that they're, you know, the mm -hmm. people who are going to lead you towards God and not away from right. God. Right. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. So you were smoking marijuana. Yes. Okay. Were you doing any other kind of drugs? Uh, that was it for the first about six months. I, you know, cause I lived in a, grew up in a small town in, here in Saskatchewan mm -hmm. and there wasn't a lot available, you know, so alcohol, obviously, uh, marijuana, mushrooms. Um, you know, that was kind of what was available. So that was what I was getting involved mm -hmm. with. 
And uh, it was, and partly because I had some, you know, lines that I wouldn't cross maybe at the start. At the time, yeah. Um, but the more I got into it, the more I realized that, you know, those lines were moving further and further ah. ahead. You know, and there was more things that I was willing to do that I maybe wouldn't have been willing to do when I was younger. Mm -hmm. And uh, after six months of living this lifestyle, like I said, I had quit school. My friends completely changed. I had completely changed. Um, you know, I wasn't talking to my family very much. If, if I was, I was lashing out at them. Mm. Um, you know, I was using them for maybe money and I just getting in trouble with the police. And uh, it was six months after I started smoking pot for the first time, I was introduced to a new drug. And I had never heard of it before. No one I had, mm. I had ever known had heard about it. It was called crystal meth. Mm. And at the time, wow. this was 15 years ago. You know, this, uh, you know, not much was really known as far as, you know, um, people talking about it in school or anything like that. So I didn't really know what I was getting myself into. But, you know, like I said, as soon as I got into drugs, it just consumed my whole life. And, and if, if that consumed my whole life as being alcohol and marijuana, then crystal meth was just a completely, I, I always describe it like this, is that I made the choice to try that drug the first time. After that, I no longer had a choice. Wow. So you were a slave to it. You yes. You became a slave to it. Yeah, it was wow. now a need, an uncontrollable mm. need. I, I couldn't think about anything else. I couldn't, you know, it, it just, it gave me so much fear and anxiety just thinking of a time that I wouldn't have it because I had to have it. Mm. So how did, so, so you started taking it quite regularly. Mm -hmm. And how did that affect your health, your life, your behavior? Well, uh, well, the drug is a long acting drug, so it's a stimulant. So it keeps you up for days on end. Hmm. Um, you don't eat, you don't sleep, um, you know, it's very unhealthy because your heart rate is up and you're, uh, you know, you have, you have, you feel like you have all this energy, but you just keep going and going and going, uh, usually until the drugs wear out, you know, because, uh, you know, not many people who do that drug, you know, stop, you know, unless they have to, you know, whether you're run out of money or you get caught by the police or whatever it is, you just keep pushing your limits. And, uh, and that's what happened. I would just stay up for, for sometimes weeks on end. And uh, I wouldn't eat and I just became very pale. I became, you know, almost looked like I was like almost a walking skeleton or a walking oh, dead. Wow. My skin was pale. I had sores in my mouth. I had sores on my skin. Um, half of the things I was seeing weren't even real. You know, I would, mm -hmm. the police picked me up one time outside of Shaunavan. Um, I was in a field outside of town. Uh, the field was muddy. I had stripped off all my clothes. I was running through the field. I was picking up rocks and cutting them, cutting myself oh. with these rocks that I found. And when the police came out there to, to, to take me in, I started throwing the rocks at them, chasing them, um, yelling at them, screaming at them. And, uh, you know, this was kind of the mindset that I, that I so ended you, up in. You kind in. of turned into a crazy, psychotic yeah. like animal in, yeah. a, in a sense. Yeah. yeah, there's a story in the Bible um, about the demoniac mm -hmm. that uh, Jesus set free, and he was wandering through the graves, cutting himself with stones. and And I can I can somewhat identify with what that would be like, um, because I was in a field wandering around, cutting myself with stones. And so that was kind of you know within a not even a you know I was maybe 17 or 18 years old at that point. You know, only doing these drugs for mm -hmm. maybe a year or two that I got to that point. Mm -hmm. uh, so you came from a Christian home, Christian parents. They must have found this pretty upsetting and disturbing. Mm -hmm. um, what, what was your parents going through, you know, that, that you're aware of at the time or maybe they've shared with you since? Well, like I said, my mom, uh, you know, she's a single parent. So mm -hmm. it was kind of her and I. I'm my mm -hmm. only child. It was just the two of us. Okay. Um, I did have family, but not very close. Um, later on, some of them moved to try and help me out and mm. try to steer me on the right track. But uh, yeah, for my mom, it was, it was hard. I don't know how she, she went from day to day. You know, I remember her talking about that it was even hard for her to go to work. Yeah, you know, cause sure. uh, to know that even if I wasn't living at home at the time, you know, to know what I was doing or. Well, she was probably know. fearing for your life at that yes. point in many ways. And yeah. And if I was at home, it was even worse because, you know, what is she going to come home to? Am I going to yeah. be violent? Am I going to, you know, there was times where I would destroy the house. You know, I would just wreck everything that I could. Or there were times that I would threaten her. You know, I remember oh, wow. one time or a couple times, you know, physically wanting to hurt her. And, and uh, but like, like you said, she was a, a Christian. You know, she was a praying mom. Um, she, she knew the Lord. 
And, uh, you know, so she understood that this was a spiritual battle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She would address me sometimes, not even as her son. She would address the the spiritual forces inside of me and say, yeah. you know, like, you have no authority in Jesus' name and mm -hmm. you will not hurt me. And and I remember, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to hurt her and wanting to actually swing my, my fist at her, but feeling like there was something holding my hand, wow. you know, and not being able to follow through. And and there was just a just a strong, you know, spiritual battle for my life, mm -hmm. um, you know, for my family's life, you know, mm -hmm. the family. No one, no one loves you more than your family does. Right. And yeah. uh, so it's yeah. very hard for them to see you in mm -hmm. that state. Yeah, well, the word says Satan comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly what he was doing. He was, he was stealing everything. He was destroying. He was about ready to take your life in so many ways and, and crushing your mom. Sure, I'm sure it was terrifying for mm -hmm. her yes. to have gone through that. So, yes. you know, with most, most addicts, you know, sometimes it takes them hitting a bottom or a couple of bottoms mm -hmm. before they kind of make their way out of that. Um, was there a bottom for you? Yeah, I, I like how you put that, a couple of bottoms. Yeah, there was uh, definitely a moment where I felt like I was at the bottom. And uh, that happened for me was, was during a, actually an overdose. I had gotten to the point where I had to take so much drugs just to feel better, not even good, just better. Um, that I had to mix different drugs and, and do more, more and more amounts. Mm. And one night... You know, I was at home and I was doing all these drugs and I felt my heart start to fail. I felt the signs of a heart attack. And uh, because I was so consumed with these drugs, I knew exactly what the effects on your body were. I knew what an overdose was. I knew the signs of overdose. You know, and when my left side of my body went numb and my chest got, uh, you know, uh, unbearable pain and I got shortness of breath and, and I just felt that I was dying and I knew that I was dying. And I remember in that moment getting really scared. Um, you know, up to that point, sometimes you're young, you're a teenager, you kind of feel invincible. You know, you feel like, uh, you know, at this point, actually, I wanted to die. You know, mm -hmm. I was living in, you know, what I consider is hell on earth. You know, I didn't want to live. I was in complete darkness. I had no hope. And uh, when, I, when I felt that I was dying, I saw the end of my life right in front of me. It was this, it was this line, you know, right in front of me. And I knew that, that in a few moments I was going to be dead. And past this line at the end of my life, I looked and at, as far as I could see from that line was darkness for all of eternity, as wow. far as I could see. And I realized what was happening and I knew what this place was and I knew what was going to happen. So in that moment, I knelt down and I just prayed this simple prayer. I said, God, I know I'm dying and I deserve to die. I said, but before I die, I want to know that I want to make things right between me and you. Wow. So I said, please forgive me for everything that I've done. And immediately after I did that, I also, I also prayed one more thing, though. I said, if I do live, uh, you can have my life because I don't want it anymore. Hmm. But as soon as I prayed that prayer, I still felt the same physically. I still saw the end of my life right in front of me. But that darkness for all of eternity changed to a bright white light. Mm. And I had this peace just fell over me. And I knew that I was going to be with God. And I knew that he had forgiven me and that things were right between me and him. And I had no fear of death anymore. And I was almost excited that this is yeah. what I was, you know, I yeah. knew, I knew what was happening. And then I ended up getting to the hospital miraculously uh, from one of my mom's friends. And mm. I survived that night. You know, they were the, even the doctors were wondering, there was the, you know, the paddles beside me and they're giving me all this different medication. And I ended up not having a heart attack. Mm, I ended God. up living. I still felt very weak, but I knew that I had to follow through on that prayer that mm -hmm. he could have my life because I didn't want it anymore. Yeah. And you didn't really pray to live. You, you prayed to, you just prayed for God to forgive you so that you'd be right in that relationship with him. Yes. So you just didn't beg for your life. You, you begged him to come back to him yes. and to be with him because you knew God's presence, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe not the way you do now, but you knew about God and who he was and how good it could be. Yes. And that's, that's fascinating. That's fascinating. So you gave your life to Christ. Okay. So real quick, tell us what happened since then. Well, I ended up going to a program called Teen Challenge, which uh, mm -hmm. a lot of people have maybe yeah. heard of. I was there for not just a year. I was there for two full years. Oh, good for you. That's and, great. Uh, and I just, I, I, I didn't want to leave because yeah. I was getting this relationship. So Teen Challenge, it's a 
biblically based addiction recovery center. Yes. Right for men. At yes. The, yeah. The, uh, there's a woman's one now, but it was for men at the time. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Christ-centered uh, approach to uh, and a residential program. And really the focus the whole time was on was on getting a relationship with God, learning about God. Um, mm -hmm. They don't focus on your addiction. They don't, you know, say, you know, what are the things in your past that led you to use? What are all these, you know, they just like said, a no, typical just, recovery center would. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. They just focus on God. Don't talk about your addiction. Focus on on his life for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, and that's what I did. And, and, and I just began slowly, sometimes quickly, just changing my my whole life. You know, I felt the call on my life to to preach and to be a leader and to and I, that's where I started worship leading hmm, was there yeah. at Teen Challenge the first month I was there I you know wow. they had me leading worship and which doesn't usually happen but no. uh, yeah so I stayed there for two years I went to Bible school after that hmm. um, uh, with the Victory Bible College in Thailand hmm. and uh, wow. I also worked for a couple summers at a youth program um, just like Teen Challenge but for teenagers teenage boys called Rock Solid Refuge mm. that my family helped start because of my story. And, uh, and ever since then, I've been just going after God, going after His plan for my life. And I want to bring up one thing about you said that, uh, you know, it's who we hang around with. Mm -hmm. You know, because the same thing about me getting involved with the wrong group of people in, when I was a teenager is the same way God delivered me, is that He led me around a group of on fire believers yes who not only just went to church on sunday but also sought god during the week went after his presence uh just you know full with everything that they had and it's those people that have took me where i am today you know mm -hmm. i don't i don't attribute the way that i am today to my own personal strength or my mm -hmm. own personal zeal I attribute most of what I've done to the people that God's placed around me, and I'm so thankful for them. Mm, and that's so what I pray and hope for anyone else going through yes. that as well. That's so, oh, wow. That's such a powerful, powerful story, you know. And like the Word of God says, He's taken us out of the kingdom of darkness and mm. translated us into His glorious, amazing light. And yes. that's exactly what He did in your life. And Amen. that's such a powerful story. And and, and I mean, I know there's so much more to your story and, you know, because it's not all glorious when you come out, there's ups and, these ups and downs and yes. struggles and trials and, Definitely. And, and, you know, things we have to learn um, coming out of an addictive background, um, as I know as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, I totally get that. So there's so much more to your story that we just don't have time for today. But um, I, I just want to um, talk to the viewers for a minute. You know, if you've been struggling at all, if you have... Um, addiction in your life, if you're hanging around with the wrong groups of friends, or if maybe you're a parent, you're a mom, you're a dad, you're a relative, an aunt, an uncle, a grandparent, and you are desperately worried about someone in your life that's fallen into addiction, you know, whether it's a little bit or or maybe down the darkest road, just like Justin went down. You know, I'm going to get Justin to pray for you in a moment here mm -hmm. and, and pray for those that are in addiction. And, and one of the names of God is that he is the Lord who delivers me, mm -hmm. the Lord, our deliverer. And so it's not just something, well, maybe he'll do it or maybe he won't. That's who he is. He wants to do it. Mm -hmm. He desires to do it. We don't have to say, if it be your will, God, he wants to, mm -hmm. you know, he, Jesus came and he healed many. He came and he delivered many. And, and that's what he wants to do in your life or in the life of one of your loved ones. So Justin, if you could just kind of turn to the viewers right now mm -hmm. and, and just pray for that delivering power, that miraculous living, amazing power mm -hmm. that takes people out of darkness and brings them into his light. Amen. I would love to. So for those of you struggling with addiction or you who have family members struggling with addiction, I just want to speak hope over you. And I just declare the word of the Lord over you and his hope and his power to deliver and to restore. And in the name of Jesus, I just lift up those people, mm -hmm. God, struggling yes, with addictions. Father, we know, God, mm -hmm. that they were not yes. called and they were not created to be living in bondage. But Father, they were called and born to be living in your glorious light, as Sherry said. Mm -hmm. And Father, I just yes. speak freedom, your freedom over them now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for those lies of the enemy to be uprooted right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for your truth 
to come and be made known into each mind and to each heart right now in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for a peace upon the families and the, and the parents and the grandparents and the aunts and the uncles right now in Jesus' name. My family prayed for me, and sometimes they saw me get worse the more they prayed, but they stood on the Word of God, and they declared His Word over my life, and they saw the complete restoration, mm -hmm. and they stood on it. Even in those moments that they saw, they looked like no hope, they continued to declare His Word. So we declare His Word over them right now, yes, that His plan is to prosper them, and not to harm them, Father, and to give them a hope and a future. And Father, I thank you for the future that you have for each person struggling today. Father, and I thank you that you are bringing restoration because you are the restorer. And Father, we put our mm -hmm. trust in you, our hope in you. Yes. And Father, we just love you, Father. And Father, I just thank you for this moment. And I thank you for this moment to lift these people up and for us to put our trust in you again. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So good. God is so good. You know, the Bible says who the sun sets free is free indeed. And Amen. you have experienced that glorious freedom in Christ Jesus. You know, and um, I just I just want to talk to the viewers right now as well. Um, thank you so much for watching this program. We, we just love you. We appreciate you. And keep praying. Keep mm -hmm. praying for your loved ones. Keep praying for those that you're believing for, you know, that, like that old song, Don't Stop Believing. You know, right. don't stop believing because no matter how far down in the pit someone's life is, Jesus, yes. the power of Christ is greater than the power of the grave. Mm. Amen. <laughs> it, you know, just like Lazarus, he was, he was dead for three days and God raised him back to life. Jesus raised him back to life and, and he can do the same in your situation where something seems deathly, something seems impossible, God can bring it back to life. Mm -hmm. So I just thank you so much for watching. You know, if, if you have a comment for this program or a testimony or a prayer request, you can go to our website at equipministries.ca and uh, cl click on the contact form. I'd love to hear from you. And if you want to support this program um, financially in any way and the Holy Spirit Broadcasting Network, who, who's the main um, network that airs it along with other networks, you can just go on to hsbn.tv and go on to the donate button and bless them, bless them. We are putting the gospel around the world and um, we just love you for watching us. <laughs> so have a great day and we appreciate you all. Oh, 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 oh,